so hello all my name is krishna and welcome to my youtube channel so guys this is the third tutorial on aws amazon sage maker and in this particular video what we are going to do is that we are going to create a notebook instance and uh, again the whole ml project that is basically about what we were discussing about right in our previous section build train and deploy a machine learning model in the previous session i showed you how you can start a notebook instance now in this tutorial i'll try to show you what all steps we need to do so that we can build train and deploy a machine learning model again this will be into multiple steps again so i have written over here what i have done is that i have just created a new notebook file over here itself and initially the steps that we are going to start with and probably this is the first step first of all we are going to import the necessary libraries uh, we are going to create some s3 buckets now what is the main use of this s3 bucket is that we will be able to save the training data and test data apart from that also whatever model we train in the sage maker we'll also try to save those in the s3 bucket because that is the storage unit right so anytime if we want uh, its reference we can actually retrieve it from there because reading it from s3 bucket is very very good it is quite scalable uh, you can hit any number of requests from this particular instance right so let's go ahead so in the second step we'll try to create the s3 bucket and then we'll map the training and test data in s3 that is basically the path we'll also map the output path of the models uh, output path of the model in the s3 now let's go ahead and try to see this now first of all we will be importing sage maker because in this machine learning algorithm i'm going to use some built in algorithms that are uh, that are present in sage maker like xg boost uh, we will be downloading an image container which has that xg boost hole in built algorithm and that whole thing can be downloaded from this library that is called as get underscore image underscore uri i'll be showing you that in my upcoming videos uh, but the first thing whenever you really want to work with uh, sage maker you have to import this library called as boto3 if you know about boto3 guys with the help of python from our local environment also i can read the s3 buckets uh, if it is public by this boto3 algorithm okay like it is just like for you utilize pandas to read data frames if you have boto3 you'll be able to access the s3 bucket if the public access is actually given but right now i'm using some im roles and i have provided the s3 bucket uh, basically i have provided the s3 bucket access to this particular instance so let's go uh, to the, the next step and we will also be requiring some s3 underscore input and sessions because if we really want to use this instance with respect to SageMaker, we have to create a uh, session. Now coming to the next step, the first step, let me just go to my S3 bucket. So this is my S3 bucket. How do you go? Just go and click on this AWS, right? When you're going inside this, if you go and search for S3, right, you will be going over here. Now in S3, you don't have anything right now, right? You, it is completely okay. You have one over here. Let us delete this. Okay. I don't require it uh i'll try to create it from scratch and try to show it to you and this one i had actually created while i was practicing these things so let's go over here now first of all we will try to create the bucket name okay first let me just execute all these libraries now we'll try to create a bucket name now since my project is something called as bank application so i'm actually solving a bank use case uh, and based on that, I will try to create a bucket name. Now in the S3 bucket, you can see that nothing is there. Now we have to create this bucket name with the help of some Python code itself, right? So uh, let's go over here. I've given my bucket name is equal to bank application and you can change this name as how you want, okay? And if I really want to, first of all, access S3 bucket, I have to create a session also. And before that, guys, always remember my next line of code that I am seeing. I really want to check my region name because based on region name, I may be accessing different, different buckets. I want to create my different, different uh, folders in subset folders inside my bucket. Suppose uh, and, and usually in AWS, right? Many people will be working in different, different region right now. If I, if I just go in AWS console, you'll be able to see that I'm working in North Virginia, right? And Virginia, which is in US East region right so currently i'm doing this now there are scenarios where you'll be working in different different region based on the servers based on the response time that you'll be able to get quickly like suppose if you are in the europe region you will probably be using this all regions over there right so that you get the response quickly of the services that you're actually trying to use right now i'm in us east north virginia so i'm going to use this and for that if i really want to uh, get how to retrieve the region name you can use boto3.session.session 
dot region name so by this you will be able to get the region name now you can see that i have used uh, a bucket name called as bank application this is just a variable this is my region name us east one okay and definitely that is matching my uh you can see whatever uh, in in the aws console when i log in it is actually present in the us each region right now the next step is that now i have taken this bucket name i'm going to create this bucket name over here right you can also create it manually but i really want to do it with the help of code so that it becomes an automated process now let's see over here i have written boto 3 dot resource of s3 this is how we actually uh, get the access of the s3 bucket and I'm writing a simple condition saying that if my region is US East one, I'm going to create this bucket. Okay. There is a create bucket function. If you go and press shift tab. Okay. Uh, this create bucket helps you to create the bucket name and the first parameter is basically the bucket name. So whatever bucket name I'm giving over here, I'm going to use this over here. And by using this automatically, the bucket will be created in the S3 buckets, S3 uh, manager over here, right? You'll be able to see that bucket name. Uh, so let's execute this if if probably if there is an exception if there is some kind of connection issues It will go to this exception over here and again if I execute this you'll be able to see Yes, the s3 bucket has been created successfully now if I go and reload over here You'll be able to see that that folder has been actually created. Okay, so this is basically the folder that has got created You can see over here bank application perfect. So I've, I've created the s3 bucket now I also have to make sure that, uh, you know, uh, my model path, you know, the model path, the output paths are basically I'm training my model over here. I have to save that model inside my S3 bucket so that I'll be able to do the versioning of the model. Also tomorrow, some new more data comes and again, I have to train my model after training my model again, I have to put that in my S3 bucket so that I will be able to version that particular model, which is the most recent model. And probably sometimes I may be requiring the older model also to just verify some things, right? So at that particular case, I can also get the model name. Okay, so model name, what I'm going to do is that uh, currently using the SageMaker, I am going to use the XGBoost built-in algorithm, right? So for that, I will be using a prefix. I'll be taking an output path, which looks like this. Suppose if I really want to access this bank application, I have to create a path, something like this S3 of bank application, right? Now, since I want to create my model, uh, whatever the model is basically trained i want to store that in my s3 bucket so for that i'll be using some two brackets like this the first bracket is basically it will be replaced by bucket name the second bracket will be replaced by prefix like this so prefix is just like another folder which i'm giving for my algorithms so that the model gets saved inside this output folder okay so once i execute this so this is basically my output path that basically means once I train my model, it will get saved inside this output folder. Okay. And every time when I tra retrain my model, every time a new version of the model will be stored with a proper folder so that every model trained, you'll be able to see based on time. So this were the two parts that I really wanted to discuss. Uh, in this part, what we have done is that we have, we have mapped the train and test data in S3. So whatever this part, this bucket I've actually created, that is bank application inside this, I will be creating my, I'll be uploading my training and test data set. Okay. This is my, uh, next step, which I'm going to do it in my next video. And then, uh, I've also mapped my model output path. So after my model gets trained, it will be getting saved over here. So these are the two steps that I have done in my next video. I will be saving my train and test data in the S3 bucket inside this bank application bucket itself. My model path is this one mod train model output is this one. And right now I will be setting up my uh, train and test data that is going to uh, get saved in the S3 bucket. So that I'll be doing in my next video. So I hope you like this particular video uh, and this is the tutorial three. Now we are going to come to the tutorial four. Thank you all. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye.